So I was just at this air show recently, saw an F-22 flying in person for the first time. Um, I'd seen one in static displays a few times before, but yeah, it's the first time I saw one flying. It really got me thinking about how old this jet design actually is. You know, the F-22 Raptor wasn't like officially in service until I think 2005, but it really dates back to the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program and uh, the YF-22, which sort of the name as it was in uh, experimental stages. The YF-22 is very similar to the finished project, the F-22 Raptor, but this thing goes back to the early 90s. The first one flew in 1990. Thinking about all this really reminded me of this old Sega Genesis game that I have. It's called F-22 Interceptor Advanced Tactical Fighter. Again, ATF or Advanced Tactical Fighter, was like the name of the project to develop the next generation of fighter jet. And this was way back in the late 80s, early 90s, they were thinking about this. Um, so this game is from 1991, before it was even called the Raptor. So the game starts off with this menu for cadet training or combat. This is basically your difficulty level. Um, your missions here are also in order of difficulty. So USA uh, campaign is sort of like your training. And then um, it gets more difficult as you go down. Here's a f little tease at these amazing 3D graphics. They're actually pretty decent. <laughs> they do run at a very slow frame rate, but again, this is early 3D on a 16-bit system that really wasn't meant to do 3D without you know any help from uh, extra processors in the cartridge. Uh, so again, this is all running on a stock Sega Genesis, and um, it's quaint. It's of its time. If you grew up in the late 80s, early 90s, playing 3D. Uh, flight simulator games on the Amiga 500 or on a, a DOS PC. This isn't that unsimilar to what you would have saw there, F F-16 Falcon, or uh, I used to play um, F-29 Flight Retaliator uh, on DOS on a 286. So to start off, all you really have to do is hit your afterburner and pull up, and you'll take off. Uh, so that's pretty simple, but that said, this game is actually pretty complicated. Definitely had to look up the controls for this one. I didn't have the instruction manual uh, in, in this, I just had the loose cartridge in the, in the case. And this is definitely one that you're going to need the uh, instruction manual for. Um, this only uses a three-button Genesis controller, as obviously this predates the six-button controller. And this is a game that definitely could have taken advantage of the six-button controller. There's a lot of button combinations in here. Um, on the face buttons, almost all three of them in combinations, like uh, A plus C, C plus B. <laughs> at the same time do something um, and then some of the directions like up and start um, down and start do different things so there's a lot of button combinations in this one that you've got to remember there's definitely one that you're going to want the instruction manual for um, but that said this is fairly in-depth um, more in-depth than i thought it was going to be Anyone who's ever played a combat flight simulator should be pretty familiar with what we see on screen. Uh, the top half of the screen, we've got the HUD. Um, the left side of that is your airspeed. The right side is your altitude. Uh, the top of the HUD, we see uh, your G-forces. The screen will black out if your G-forces get too high. Uh, in the middle, obviously, your reticles for uh, aiming the cannons and locking on uh, missiles. Um, the bottom half is the cockpit view, and that's pretty in-depth, too. The, you got all these red squares at the top left and right side of the cockpit. Those actually do mean something. Uh, some of them are lit up right now because I'm taking damage. Um, the top three on either side or the top six uh, will light up when missiles are locked onto me. Other than that, I couldn't tell you what most of them mean. 
Um, we've got our shafts and uh, SDW is Sidewinder. That's the missile you have currently selected or, or bomb. And uh, then you've got the two screens. Bottom left is your radar. Uh, targets will be red. And bottom right side is like a 3D view of the target you're currently locked onto. With a number below it is how many miles that target is away from you. So it's all pretty in-depth, but standard stuff for really the kind of PC-ish um, 3D flight simulator, combat simulators of the time. So in this mission, we're taking out mostly ground targets. Um, this game's pretty realistic in the loadout. It's not arcade-like. You've got a very limited amount of cannon fire. Um, you can only hold, you know, a couple of uh, Sidewinder missiles, for example. Um, here we're, we're using the Maverick. Uh, it's uh, like a, a guided air-to-ground missile, um, but it's not fire and forget. You have to actually steer it <laughs> while it's heading down towards the target so it goes into like a first person view of your your maverick missile and you've got to steer it towards the target at a whole whopping five frames per second <laughs> makes it a little bit hard um, but you could get used to it and it's certainly playable Pressing the start button at any time will bring up this screen. Uh, here we have a larger map view on the left side and a top-down view of our plane on the right side. This will sh show damage if it's got damage. Uh, shows how many lives we have left. Um, shows a password. This game does have a password system so you can continue where you left off uh, in a mission. Um, this is also where you select what missiles you want equipped. Uh, missiles or, or bombs. Uh, we also see it says press A for menu, uh, press C for help. So if you press C, it brings up this help screen. It actually tells you what all the buttons are, so that's pretty handy. Uh, if we go back to the menu and press A, this brings up another menu where we can change camera angles, change the controls. Um, there's, for example, an external uh, camera view we can see here where we have an overlay of a sprite trying to look like it's 3D, but it's not. <laughs> Um, and then also if you press, um, I think it's B and C at the same time, that brings up another menu. And in this menu is like all your assists. You can turn off uh, certain assists or turn on certain assists. You got unlimited ammo, uh, you've got ground avoidance so you can't crash into the ground. Kind of makes it easier. Um, the more of these assists that you turn on, the lower of a score you'll get like when you beat missions and stuff. Um, so, yeah, and again, at the very beginning of the game, when we picked, like, Cadet or Combat or whatever, that's also gonna predetermine what some of these, um, what, what assists here are gonna be turned on or off. Uh, so I'm playing this on my Hyperkin Mega Retron HD uh, clone console. It allows me to capture uh, HDMI. And uh, I played it on my real Genesis as well, just to make sure, you know, it's roughly running at the same speed. And I would say it's pretty comparable. It, sometimes my cannon was firing and I, I wasn't pressing uh, C. And um, I thought it was the game was glitching. I thought maybe the game was glitching because I was playing it on a clone system. Uh, but nope, turns out it was just my controller. Uh, the C button on my controller kept getting stuck in. Uh, but anyways, uh, this game turned out to be a pleasant surprise. It's actually very in-depth. Um, it's very playable. 
Um, probably one of the best combat flight simulators, 3D combat flight simulators um, on the 16-bit consoles, I would say. I've never seen anything better. Um, you know, I like uh, some of the F F-15 Super Strike Eagle and those games on the Super Nintendo, um, but those are a lot more arcade-like. If you're into these uh, old-school, early 3D flight simulator, combat simulator games, definitely check this one out.